Hi, this is Yas Tzu and Manos Berdakis, and this is case 162 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case of recurrent saphenous vein graft failure. The patient presented with medically refractory angina. He had previous bypass with several occluded bypass grafts. However, one of the vein grafts that was still patent, the vein graft obtuse marginal, had multiple episodes of restenosis requiring percutaneous coronary intervention. He had recurrent instant restenosis, and because of that, the patient was sent for attempting to recanalize the native coronary artery CTO of the circumflex. Quite often, in patients who present with vein graft lesions, we will treat the native lesions because the long-term patency is better with PCI of the native coronary artery compared with PCI of the vein graft. However, the native coronary lesion can sometimes be very complex. So in patients who have a complex native coronary lesion and have a simple vein graft lesion, quite often we will still treat the vein graft. However, in those who have a complex vein graft lesion, especially one with recurrent failures as in this patient, then we try to treat the native lesion, even though in many cases these lesions can be very complex with significant calcification. This is the dual angiogram showing a CTO of the circumflex, beginning at the ostium of the circumflex. The length is long, about 40 to 50 millimeters. Distal vessel is of good quality and is filling from a saphenous vein graft that is already developing recurrent restenosis. Our plan was to try first undergrade and then try with retrograde. The patient had a low ejection fraction, that is why we did a right heart catheterization. His wedge pressure was only 13, therefore we decided to not use We did undergrade wire escalation, but the wire could not enter into the distal trilumen, and as a result we changed into the retrograde approach. The vein graft was engaged with an AL1 guide that works very well for left-sided grafts. We used a guide extension, Turnpike LP, and then a Mongo and Gaia second guide wire, and those guide wires did enter subindimally into the area of the occlusion. Now, if we use the CTO ARC terminology, the term subminimal has actually been replaced with the term extra plaque. The next step is to do the guide extension reverse cart. We advanced an undergrade guide extension and an undergrade balloon and tried to advance the retrograde wire into the undergrade guide extension. This was challenging, but we were able to advance the guide extension in the middle segment of the circumflex. And then uh, we were able, after some attempts to actually advance the retrograde guide wire into the undergrade guide extension, as can be seen here. The guide extension can really facilitate a reverse card. We then exchanged the wire for an R350, but then we had difficulty advancing equipment distally. We could not get a, a, even a small balloon to go through the distal circumflex because of significant calcification. Eventually, we were able to uh, exchange over a retrograde microcatheter, the R350, for a rota floppy wire, and then did rotational atherectomy with a 1.5 millimeter bear at 15,000 RPMs. And although we were not able to actually cross the lesion, and the patient did develop transient bradycardia and chest pain, we did not use a temporary pacemaker, it did modify the lesion enough that then we were able to advance undergrade equipment. We had a dual lumen microcatheter, and then by using the dual lumen, we were able to advance a guide wire into this distal circumflex, which then could facilitate undergrade standing. The balloon now expanded nicely, and then we were able to stand all the way to the left main ostium using drag eluting stents. There was some patent segment of the LAD, but we decided to do the provisional technique. So we stand it from the circumflex all the way into the left main. And this um, provided a nice result. We did rewire after doing the proximal optimization technique. And then uh, did um, um, an osteal flush 4.0 to further dilate the ostium of the left main. So now we have the native vessel recanalized. The question is what to do with the vein graft. One option is to do nothing because we know that this vein graft has been restenosing repeatedly, therefore it would likely occlude by itself. The other option is to, is to occlude the vein graft 
to reduce the competitive flow and the risk of thrombosing the native coronary vessel. In this case, we thought there was a significant competitive flow from the vein graft and we decided to try to occlude the bypass graft. And quite often for doing that, we use amplatzer vascular plugs that are often oversized by 30 to 50 percent. The challenge with delivering those plugs is that we have to remove the guide wire. So what we did in this case, we inserted a flexor cook sheath over a grand slam extra supportive guide wire into this uh, vein graft to obtuse marginal branch. And then we have to choose the size of the amplatzer vascular plug. In this case, we did IVUS of the SVG and the diameter was about four millimeters. Therefore, we decided to deliver a six millimeter amplatzer vascular plug too, which is 50% oversized compared with the vessel. Unfortunately, it was tough to deliver it over that uh, cook sheet. The support was poor. So once the plug tried to take this uh, bend to enter into the saphenous vein graft, everything came out. Another way to do this is to actually use a uh, guide extension. So we used back the amplatz one guide and then we advanced the amplatzer after we preloaded it into a guide extension and then we're able to advance the guide extension inside the saphenous vein graft, pull back the guide extension and then we're able to deploy the uh, AVP2 which provided nice occlusion of the saphenous vein graft. A nice result was achieved on the native. We now have excellent flow, under great flow into the circumflex without competitive flow from the saphenous vein graft. So a summary, this is an example of a patient who had recurrent saphenous vein graft failure, something not uncommon, especially for old saphenous vein grafts, in which treating the native coronary provided a good solution. Of course, treating that wasn't easy. We had to overcome several difficulties, including a chronic total occlusion, significant calcification, a balloon uncrossable distal lesion, and a bifurcation in the proximal segment of the vessel, but we were able to obtain a nice result after performing a therectomy and performing standing using the provisional technique. And finally, in this case, to minimize the competitive flow and the concomitant risk of stent thrombosis due to competitive flow, we did uh, use an amplatzer vascular plug and successfully occluded the diseased vein graft. Thank you.